Hello and welcome to the Relationship Revolution. I'm Miguel and today's topic is going to be interesting because it answers the question, why isn't love always enough? So this is a very loaded topic because, you know, we've been taught by society, by the media, by growing up with fairy tales and beautiful stories that all you need is love. There's even the song, all you need is love, da 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 da. And the truth is that, um, you know, we are bound by this fantasy that if we love someone enough, everything is going to be okay. And sadly, this isn't the truth. The reality of life is that loving someone is not enough for just making a relationship work. You see, if we love someone, we're committed to seeing them through the good, the bad, and the ugly, but sometimes we have to take a step back and protect ourselves or protect the situation by saying, hey, I love you, but we need to go our separate ways, and you might be facing this situation. So here are some of the key things that I want to discuss. Number one, I want to share with you just sort of a situation that is an example of why love is not enough. And then I want to talk about what ingredients we need to make love kind of become more than just love. And then finally, I want to help you look at, you know, ways in which you can identify your own situation. Now, a couple of years ago, I was counseling a woman who came to see me and said to me, Miguel, I love my partner more than anything in this world. This person is everything to me. And unfortunately, I'm stuck in the situation where all the love in the world does not protect me from the abuse, the toxicity, from his own abuse that he is going through. He was a complete alcoholic and when he was drinking, he was becoming completely aggressive towards her and the kids. And the truth is that, you know, she hung in there. She stuck it out. She tried her best. And she constantly took him back every time he would go out and get drunk and sometimes meet other women and sometimes come home and beat her and the kids. She always, always, always waited until he was sober when he was back in his right frame of mind. And she would look at that person who was the good person and say, well, because he still exists somewhere in there, I am going to stick this out. And over time, you know, she, she would keep trying and keep taking him back, but the beatings got worse, the abuse got worse, the situation never improved, and eventually it got to the point where they were threatened to having the option of losing their kids, or not having the option, but they were actually at the point of losing their kids because of the consistent abuse and because of the amount of times that the police had been called. Now, the thing is that this is a very extreme example, but it has to be extreme because I know so many of us and so many of you who are in relationships, who are in situations where you love someone and that love is allowing you to put yourself and expose yourself to all kinds of pain, to all kinds of abuse, to all kinds of situations that you don't deserve and that you truly need to protect yourself from. And I want with this to say that, yes, I know this is extreme, but love in this situation is also about understanding that that person also needs to love you enough to make the changes in their life, to be able to become the person that they once were or the person that they are deep down inside. But it is not somewhere where you can safely sit and wait and stay. If you are in danger of an abusive relationship, if you are in danger of constantly being cheated on because you love someone, but even though you love this person, you cannot trust this person, then this is not a safe relationship for you. This is not a safe place for you, even though you are a safe place for them. So this is the one part. And things that you need to look out for in a relationship where sometimes you're giving and giving and giving all the love in the world, but it's still not enough, is where you find yourself, number one, 
making compromises and feeling the result of these compromises constantly. You know, sometimes it's an addiction that your partner might have. Sometimes it has got to do with behavioral patterns that your partner might have. Sometimes loving someone, but having to compromise your entire existence to be with that person might have you loving someone, but living a very unhappy and unfulfilled life. And you've got to get to the point where you sit down and I will often tell you to pick up a, a pen and a paper. And I always have a pen and a paper near me. Um, my book is just out of reach. Here it is. Um, and, and sit down and write about what is going on. And sometimes it's not just about writing one list of things someone does wrong. It's about taking time to give yourself 10 to 15 days to write every day. Number one, when you wake up, how are you feeling about the way you're being treated in your relationship? How are you feeling about this person in spite of how they're treating you? And creating sort of like a data sort of collection that you can then go back to and look at how you're being treated versus how you're feeling. And sometimes you need to realize that even though you love someone, even though there's this 100% from your side, it's not coming through from the other side. If someone loves you and you love them, that's great, that's beautiful. But it's also got to do with your entire life. If you love someone, but you cannot be with that person because you don't have the same values. If you love someone and you cannot be with that someone because of the extreme differences in your lifestyles, these are all things that are going to factor into a very unhappy future. Today, you could love someone with all of your heart, all your mind and all your soul. But 10 years down the line, when you've had to become a completely different person or because the circumstances have turned you into a cold, hardened hearted person because you've had to really protect yourself constantly, you need to stop and say, wow, I need to look after not only the me of today, but the future me as well. Okay. So it is important to realize that, yes, it is true. Love is not always enough. Okay. This concept of being and loving someone is not the only ingredient that you need to make a relationship work. So I want you to take these little bits of advice, take a diary and or a piece of paper and every day for 10 to 15 days, write down how they're treating you versus how you're feeling and see how the, the roads either diverge or how they're constantly parallel and learn how to make judgments for yourself, not based on how you're feeling, but based on the facts, okay? We all deserve, and you especially deserve, to be happy, to be in a safe relationship, and to want to be connected to someone who is truly committed to building a future with you. So take the time to make the decision, not just for you, but for the future you as well. So I know this was short, but I hope it helps. And in the long run, in and through all of this, make it a practice, a daily practice, to always evaluate, yes, I love someone, but am I being treated in the way that I deserve to be treated? So we've got a lot of cool topics, so hit the bell button, subscribe, and I will see you on the next episode.